And U.S. markets have been battered by the pandemic, with major indices having their worst quarter in a decade. And markets continued their downward trend on Tuesday after substantial gains on Monday, even with positive manufacturing data coming out of China for the month of March. Now, let's get some expert analysis on all of this from John Quelch, dean of the Miami Herbert Business School, and Boom Bus co-host Christy I, who joins us from Los Angeles while we recognize the social distancing protocols that everybody around is. I, I want to actually pose a question to Dean Quelch here. Uh, how is the coronavirus shaping global economies as we look at things moving forward? It seems we're reversing on the globalization trend that we've seen in the past. Dean Quelch, what do you make of this? Uh, no doubt that um, this is a bad advertisement for uh, globalization. Uh, first, uh, in the sense that this is a global health care pandemic uh, that no one can escape. And secondly, uh, that the interlocking of uh, economies um, that uh, has occurred over the last uh, 20 years, uh, both in terms of investment and trade flows, um, is now being challenged by uh, the assertion of uh, national borders uh, in the interests of protection of individual uh, citizens. It's, it's ironic, actually, that a global pandemic has actually caused the resurgence of national instincts. Um, but that's equally ironic that when things are tough, Families, friends want to get together and hug each other, but this pandemic is such that social distancing is mandated and you can't even mm -hmm. get close to your family and friends at a time of crisis and uh, uh, great need. And now, Dean Quelch, uh, Christy talked about stimulus there, and she also mentioned uh, China with their manufacturing data. Well, we've heard about what's happening here in the U.S., but what is China doing to stimulate their economy? Well, China, of course, uh, took some uh, very strong and aggressive action to uh, inject liquidity immediately into uh, the markets. Uh, they also uh, adjusted downward the, uh, the RRR, in other words, the required uh, reserve ratio that is imposed on banks. Um, that collectively has, uh, is going to account for maybe around about 100 to uh, 200 uh, billion dollars of liquidity uh, being put into the economy. In addition, there have been a range of fiscal stimulus initiatives around um, helping small and medium businesses to survive uh, with adjustments in uh, tax rates and so forth. And uh, finally, a very strong commitment coming out of China to double down on investment in uh, infrastructure, particularly high-tech infrastructure, including uh, 5G networks. And now, Christy, I got about 30 seconds left here. But uh, from all those uh, points that Dean Quelch just made, are they what's pushing up that manufacturing data? That, I mean, isn't great, but it's better than expected. It certainly is helping a little bit, but total stimulus so far is in the range of about 3.5 percent of China's GDP. And that is actually very conservative in comparison to its peers in the U.S. and Europe, who are pumping about $130 billion and counting into stimulus. So China has more of a soft wait-and-see approach. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's currently looking to be behind the curve. Boombus co-host Christy I and Dean John Quelch, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. And. Thank you.